All right, as I showed you in yesterday's episode, got the calipers coated pretty well. There's some spots that I think I want to touch up, so um, they won't go on 100% yet, but I can go ahead and start blowing the bibster apart, taking the wheels and tires off, and um, go ahead and take those rotors off. Since I'm going to replace them anyway, I can go ahead and put new bearings and all that stuff, seals and all that stuff in the new ones. Go ahead and get all that put back on before these go back on. So really that's all I'm doing right now. You're all wet. All right, so everything's going together pretty well. Um, just took bearing packer. I need to do this on a Friday video. I hadn't done this yet. Basically, this thing just packs bearings with grease. It's very fast and efficient and uh, put the new rotors on, new calipers, all new pads, and uh, brakes are about good to go. I gotta do the back. One thing I did misspeak on in the last video, I basically said the part number for these five load conversion for the Mustang was one number, I don't remember what it was, and it was actually wrong. Um, I think the Ray Bestis number was a 6009R, I believe is what it is. Anyway, if you go if you go to the other video and look at the link in the description, I basically put it what it's in there. If you didn't see that video, if you're looking to do a five load conversion and you're looking for rotors, um, the Ray Bestis part number I think is a 6009R. Uh, just go to RayPartsInc.com. You can search for these. Tell you what, I'll put a I'll put a link in this video as well, so you can go check that out. Tell you what, they just barely fit on these modified spindles I made. So you can see that new steering arm comes off the back, just barely clears this caliper. I would say that I meant to do that, but I didn't. I just got lucky. And then you can see on these uh, cables, this thing just mounts about like that. Clears everything nice and well. Had several people uh, suggest me using like a a braided brake cable and I may do that still if I need if 
it ends up that I need some more length, I may actually go with some kind of aftermarket braided brake cable up front. It'll fit the look. I mean, I like the way these look too. It has a nice clean factory look. But um, if, I, if I need some more length, that's what I'll do is I'll end up going with those. I also had a lot of comments about my braces that I was talking about in the last video, connecting these strut towers to the cylinder heads themselves. A lot of people worried about the heads actually moving. They suggested I do a motor plate style setup. And uh, I may still do something like that. Don't really know. I'll come up with something. I'm not super worried about any stress on the cylinder head itself because there won't be that much. I mean, most all the weight is held here on this section here. The only thing it was doing was it was wanting to flex this about a quarter of an inch when the weight was on it. Um, and it's just, you know, jacking with the camber. I'm sure that there'd be some more load issues and cornering. And so I just kind of wanted to tie these in somewhere just for a little added strength. And I don't think the cylinder heads themselves would take that much load. And if they did, it would actually kind of be pushing versus pulling. Um, I mean, you think a lot of things that are attached to your cylinder heads, blower, a blower, for instance, is attached to the cylinder head. And then that's, those stresses right there don't seem to affect you know, the cylinder head moving or, you know, causing gasket issues or anything like that. So anyway, I'll figure something else out though. A motor plate setup is, is a good idea, but for me, it's just not gonna work. For one, the motor plates run in between the timing chain cover and the block on these cars. And it's just gonna be too low too. I think that it's gonna be in the way of some of my exhaust work. I still gotta fit an alternator in here. My original plans was to put a belt drive fuel pump, which I don't think I'm gonna do. I think I'm just gonna sell it and just put electric pumps on this thing just to kind of get rid of some of this stuff up front. So I don't know, we'll see. Gotta figure something out. The other thing I could do too is off these plates, I could actually tie the two plates together with some kind of uh, rod, you know, one inch rod, whatever, where it kind of ties it all together but it's not its own piece so I don't know like everything else on this build kind of just figure it out as I go All right, so I got a little bit sidetracked off the Bibster. I got to messing around with uh, one of my Fronius machines and uh, was MIG welding some aluminum. So, focus. So I just did that with a standard MIG welder, the Fronius uh, Trans Steel 2200. Thing's a beast, man. I put some 045, 40, 43 aluminum in there just a regular spool using a regular torch got it set up in spray arc 100 argon what else i mean nothing fancy does have a teflon lined liner in it but i mean i mean it's just a regular aluminum spool Standard set of rollers and just a pusher. I just set this thing up in Synergic. So basically, you just put the thickness in and it kind of figures everything else out for you. I did go up on the thickness a little bit just because I wanted to be in the spray arc. So it'll even tell you if you're in spray arc or not. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. I am going to be doing a video on this thing very soon, uh, the 2200, probably, probably come out in a week or two, and I'll show you aluminum, steel, everything this thing's capable of. Alright guys, well, that's really all I can do for you today. I ordered a set of banjo fittings for the brake lines, and apparently they're the wrong threads, so I had to order some more off Amazon, they'll be here in a couple days. Couldn't really finish the brakes right now, uh, start mounting any of that 
stuff to hold the brake lines and all that sort of stuff. That's probably why I got a little bit sidetracked with the welder, but hey, maybe that's why. Maybe that's why it takes me so long to do anything because I get si sidetracked so easily. I don't know. Anyway, it's kind of a little point I wanted to make out of this video was, and this makes it, is that do your actions match what it is that you say you want? I know I'm guilty of this all the time. Um, I aspire for big things. You know, I want the channel to be a million subs. I want this huge shop. I want all these projects. These, you know, I want to build a truck. I want to build this. I want to do that. I want to have this great equipment. But do my actions match what it takes to get those things? And uh, I kind of have to check myself all the time because a lot of times it doesn't. I get slack. I say I want these things but my actions don't match. So my question is to you, do your actions match what it is that you say you want? All right, guys. That's all I got. Nothing really. Hope you all enjoyed that. I'll see you guys some more this week. Go do work, son.